Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Fisher. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Lynx Technology Partners. And on behalf of Cyversity New York Metro Chapter Leadership, I want to welcome you to our inaugural meeting with special thanks to our sponsors. Um, a little bit about the uh, New York Metro Chapter. We just launched in uh, August of this year. Um, we welcome both professional and student members. Um, everyone in, in um, the cyber world and, and risk world uh, is, is more than welcome. Um, how today's meeting will flow is we'll do uh, a little bit of introduction and then I will have the pleasure of speaking with Yonesi Nunez um, about you know, his experiences in, in a fireside chat. After that, all, all of the meeting attendees will have the opportunity to ask him questions as well. Um, and then we'll, we'll transition to a networking uh, portion of the meeting so that we can all get to know each other a little better. Um, our meetings will be virtual uh, going forward. One of the things about our chapter is it really covers uh, you know, the, the entire New York City metro area. So um, New York City proper, out to Long Island, over to Connecticut and down through um, South Jersey. So you know, we, we're covering a, a broad um, region and, and we'd love to be able to uh, expose as many people um, you know, to Cyversity and, and the many benefits it has to offer throughout the region. Um, so the way that our monthly meetings uh, will flow over time is um, in, in sort of a, a sequence. We'll start with a, a fireside chat uh, with a CISO, uh, as we will today. And then next month, the plan is to have a Skillshare. Um, the idea is to vary up the content to make sure that every member is really getting some value, right? So when we're talking to CISOs and having a fireside chat, it's really about key insights from seasoned leaders and, and getting their perspective. Um, when we're talking about a skill share, it's more about professional development, career advancement, and you know, um, takeaway skills right from the meeting. Um, we will also have moderated panels. So we wanna explore um, diverse thinking on compelling topics and, and we'll bring some thought leaders in or around a given topic and explore that. So we definitely will vary up the content uh, month to month. And how to engage with us. Um, if you haven't already, please go to the uh, Cyversity uh, website um, and go to our chapter page and or email us at nyc at cyversity.org. So um, first step of the introductions, um, I want to introduce you uh, to the members, the esteemed members of our uh, New York City chapter leadership team, um, Eric, Kirby, Jason, and Doyen. If each of you would just give, um, you know, your name a little bit about yourself and and uh, just share a little bit with everyone so that they can get to know you. Sure. This is Eric Fermenter. I am the uh, chairman and founder of Lynx Technology Partners and past president of Cyversity. Uh, I could not be more uh, excited to continue to be involved in all things related to Cyversity and in particular, uh, the New York City chapter, which we hope to uh, take to new heights with uh, the leadership on, on board today. So thank you, Jim. Hi, uh, my name is Kirby Brown. I am the Director of Information Security at SourcePoint. Uh, and I am uh, the acting president uh, right now of the New York City chapter, uh, working with uh, this, this leadership team. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Gonzalez. Uh, I currently work at Tenable, and uh, I am the treasurer for the New York chapter for uh, Cyversity, working with uh, Kirby and the team. And uh, just looking forward to uh, getting this meeting kicked off and meeting everyone. Hi. I'm doing the elder and I'm a cybersecurity professional. And um, I previously worked at um, Lionbridge Technology. And it's been a pleasure working with this team because I remember it was just out of the blues. I wanted to help out and I was embraced into the committee and it's been a wonderful experience. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Yonesi Nunez. CISO at Jack Henry and Associates. Um, Jack Henry and Associates is a technology company and payment processing service for the financial services industry. It serves more than 
9,000 customers nationwide and operates through three primary brands. It's headquartered in Missouri um, and they've made over one and a half billion in annual revenue through fiscal 2019. So um, amazing organization and, and amazing leader. So thank you, Yunessi, for joining us today and, and welcome. If you would please introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and, and what you do. Thank you so much for that, uh, Jennifer and team. Appreciate you guys reaching out to me to, to be part of your inaugural meeting. So I am humbled and excited uh, to share my story, a bit of my story with you today. Look forward to a great discussion, specifically when you guys put me in the hot seat with your questions. So uh, I'm really excited to be here. I hope everyone's having a, a lunch and learn, right? It's, it's noon, high noon here in the East Coast. Um, so a little bit about me, um, as uh, Jennifer mentioned, um, I'm the CISO at Jack Henry and Associates. I've been here for about a year. Prior to Jack Henry and Associates, I was a cybersecurity technology executive at Wells Fargo. Uh, and prior to that, as Citigroup. And if you go back in my career, you know, before this got gray and I had some hair, um, I started my career uh, as a network engineer, a developer, Novell. If you guys go back that that, that far, Novell engineer, I'm MCSC, you name it. Um, I kind of grew up through the ranks and I landed in the CISO role uh, by happenstance, right? I, I didn't set out to be a CISO. I set out to solve problems, right? And provide great customer service and, and being a genuine and authentic person, first and foremost. And, you know, some of the things I, I love about Jack Henry is that you know, even in, in our mantra and our credo and, and, and our slogan, right? We, we, we're focusing on doing the right thing, doing whatever it takes and having fun. And that resonates with me because even the work that we're doing right now today and that's diversity is doing, it is to do the right thing. It is to do whatever it takes and it's to continue to have fun. So that's something, you know, I only, not only did I get that from Spike Lee, but I, you can distill, boil things down uh, to doing the right thing. And I think that's what we're all about here. So looking forward, uh, you know, to getting to know you better, uh, let, 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 allowing you guys to get to know me better. Um, I'm uh, natively from the Dominican Republic. I uh, grew up in the Bronx. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I've got a single uh, mom background. So I, I learned and grew up uh, in the Bronx. Uh, learned a lot about risk management. Uh, you know, uh, taking my, my young, uh, oldest of four, taking my siblings to school, my mom working, you know, sometimes 12 hours, 18 hour days. I got to learn how to do food prep, take care of kids, and basically be the brother, the mom, and the dad because my mom was working. So I learned a lot about time management, right, uh, for them, for me, uh, and, and what it takes to, to keep the family and, and, and keep moving forward and, and dealing with, uh, you know, growing up in the, in the late 80s, early 90s uh, in New York City. Well, you guys know kind of how, how that went down. Uh, so how having to do uh, all that stuff at an early age, I think it translates directly into cyber information security and risk management, right? You got to know where to go, how to go, what, what streets to avoid, what trains to take, at what time, when not to take them, what not to wear. Um, so it, a lot of things that you learn that can be translated um, to the world today. So that's kind of me in a nutshell and looking forward again to, to the great discussion today. Excellent, excellent. That's wonderful, and, and you know, it's a, it's a great perspective as well. I it, it resonates with, with me um, as well. Uh, further back in time, but but yeah. So <laughs> I I you know I can I can very much appreciate that um, you know and how it sort of trains your mind for to have that risk mindset. So absolutely. Um, let's um let's get today's discussion started um, with some fresh insight and perspective. Um, around the CISO community. Uh, what cyber or risk issues are top of mind for CISOs right now? Um, what are you focused on, Yunesi? Uh, what are you hearing about from your peers, your colleagues? That's a good question, right? So I'm in DC, so I was having dinner last night with, with a few CISOs of various different industries, right? So uh, top of mind right now really is around you know, what are we going to do about these increasing ransomware attacks, right? So ransomware, uh, definitely uh, top of mind. Um, 
focus on threat and vulnerability management, uh, knowing yourself, knowing your weaknesses. Again, a lot of these factors are focusing on areas that are vulnerable, areas that are exploitable. I know we've got uh, Jason from Tenable here, so if he can go in depth into vulnerability management, but I think uh, you know risk prioritization uh, becomes important, um, building high performance teams, uh, building diverse teams, and, and not just in, in you know gender or race, uh, ethnicity or background, but also diversity of thought becomes important. And, and, and finally, it really is around uh, acquiring and retaining a talent in this space. I, I think we, we still have a big issue uh, around talent management um, and retain, retaining that talent. Uh, a lot of folks have a lot of needs for, for cybersecurity professionals. So um, for us uh, in the minority space and women, right, how do we kind of break continue to break that barrier. And, and, and one of the things uh, that I've learned is that we, we kind of have to be intentional. So I mentioned I was having dinner with a bunch of CISOs last night, right? And, you know, it, it, it you can still see the underrepresentation of minority and women, and this is a small group, right? So, so I think that there's still a lot of work uh, to be done. I think we're making great strides. Um, and, and as much as other hot topics in the space uh, communications, right, are important. Communications to your customers, uh, to your boards, uh, to your critical third parties uh, are also a hot topic. So I would say that the life of a security professional, of a CISO, it doesn't matter what level you're in, is one that's always changing. So for me, the, the recommendation here is always be a lifelong learner. I, I don't know how we can be in cyber or just information technology as a whole and not be lifelong learners because things change. Uh, you know, some say at the speed of the internet, you know, by the time you hear about something, it's already outdated and there's something new. So um, that uh, passion, that thirst for knowledge, that thirst uh, to get better every day uh, becomes something that uh, we need to carry the torch and continue to engender uh, that curiosity and that in those inquisitive minds. Yeah, thank you for that. And and um, what you said just made such an impact um, on me as well. It, it took me to, um, you know, prior to, to joining Lynx, um, I was with a big four and I, um, I would be in, you know, an executive uh, level um, meetings, right, with our, with our cyber folks across the globe. And I was the only, you know, female in there with, with, with you know, 60 plus participants. And, um, you know, it, I, it really does, uh, you know, make a statement for, um, we, we're definitely making progress. And I think, you know, diversity offers such uh, a unique opportunity for us to build that, that community, right? And, um, you know, get the word out and create that, that community of learning as well. So I, um, you know, it, it really just, made a, a really impactful uh, impression on me or your response there. So thank you for that. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about industry trends as well. So, uh, you know, what are you thinking about um, uh, impacts to the cyber and risk landscape resulting from COVID? So, you know, things like the expanding cyber attack surface uh, through remote work, uh, ransomware, which you, you highlighted, um, threats to critical infrastructure, all, all of these sort of, you know, components of, um, they're not a new reality, right? They've, they've always been there, but I think that the pronouncement of them now is, is a bit different. What, what are your thoughts around that? I think that, uh, you know, uh, living through uh, the pandemic uh, has been really interesting. Uh, there are some companies that were already uh, cutting edge as it pertained to uh, hybrid or remote work arrangements. Uh, so I, I think those companies quickly were able to pivot and suffer no impact because they already were built for that. They just had to scale. Uh, and I think for a lot of organizations that, that still believe that getting work done uh, requires you being in front uh, or in an office, right? Uh, I think work happens everywhere, right? I've got, what is it? I've got two phones right here with me. I've got, they just disappearing, but I'm holding two phones. Um, and uh, a computer, uh, work happens where, when and where you're thinking about it. And I think in our interconnected world, it's everywhere, right? So when I think about the attack surface, 
Um, it's the same that it's always been. It's just that now we are in the situation that we thought about maybe in our scenarios or maybe not, right? And we've got to deal with that. But I think from a, a technology standpoint, capabilities are there. It's what's our appetite to allow those to happen and then being able to evolve our control set to allow us to operate uh, in a remote work uh, type of environment. And for the most part, uh, if, if you look at earnings, right, and, and revenue um, and net income for a lot of the Fortune 500 uh, during the, throughout the duration of the pandemic, you see that they had record numbers, right? And, and most of the work that we perform here in the U.S. is a service services based. So I think the message that I'm getting based on the quantification of revenue is that they did really well. Uh, companies did really well in, in a remote approach. So. So I think that uh, for us, sky's the limit as it pertains to what can be done. Um, I think sometimes we set our expectations shorter than we, we, we have an opportunity to set them further, uh, uh, right? Because we will, one thing I've learned about uh, humanity, about us is that we're resilient and we will figure it out. Uh, trust that there's a problem, we will figure it out. So uh, when I think about the threat landscape, right, uh, we talked about ransomware as a form of destructive malware, it's been around for a long time. So evolving your control set to make sure that you're covered uh, in, in a distributed environment becomes really, really important. And then the ability to aggregate uh, those different control sets uh, to make sure that you have the right level of controls. If you're doing printing now at home, you got to worry about printing, remote access, how, um, endpoint protection, does it exist? And I think the biggest thing for me was really around the vulnerabilities in home Wi-Fi routers, right? And cable modems is what the, my, the main concern that I have is how to keep those uh, kind of secure uh, uh, for, for the home environment. So I, I think that's still uh, kind of an unsolved problem uh, that, that eventually we're gonna have to tackle because if uh, information is being captured at that level, uh, and the is taking place at that level, um, there might be a concern. So that, that's what keeps me up uh, at night with, with the distributed uh, environment. It's not what we're doing for the things that the company owns, but what are we doing on the user's uh, environment and network? I'm here um, in my house, right? And we have, there's four of us and we've got like 62 IP addresses, right? Um, nobody's, I don't, I've never seen an update, uh, for, for my LG TV, um, you know, that it's a security update. And if I, I'm sure if I point Nessus or, you know, uh, any of these vulnerability scanning tools, I'm pretty sure they'll find a few, right? So, but who's protecting that, right? And then, uh, a lot of these routers by default allow you to be identifiable, pingable, not to get too technical, but, uh, allow, allow attackers to footprint you and understand your environment. And, and if you look at any of those router vulnerabilities, there's a lot that allow for remote code execution, basically taking over that router over the internet. So I think we just have to understand that that's taking place and uh, what controls and mitigating factors you put in place that first understand that is happening. Number two, what, what's your uh, plan to, to help strengthen uh, that weakness? I think it's pervasive across the industry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, amazing insights and um, and absolutely true, right? And, and you think about, you know, IoT and sort of the, 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 the exponential growth around that, right? All, all of the different, um, you know, points that, that uh, could potentially be an exposure, right? So um, uh, a, a, a very, um, big challenge, you know, for, for us in the profession as we move forward. Um, an exciting one, but but a challenge nonetheless. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about your career path and, and your story, right? We're, um, we're now recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month um, uh, from mid-September to mid-October. And so um, we'd appreciate any anecdotes or advice as well, um, you know, for folks who are either looking to build a diverse uh, pipeline of talent, right, in their own organizations, and or if they're looking to, to build their career, right, just starting out? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. So um, I think that the first thing to do is to 
to be uh, authentic and to be genuine, right? So as, as an organization, my recommendation would be, you know, uh, you have the people, you have the diverse talent. Uh, what are you doing to sponsor, coach, and raise those people up, right? How, how are you pulling them up into kind of those leadership ranks so that uh, when we get there, there are others that look like us uh, at that table because the people are in the organizations. There's just, there's a barrier, right? In the leadership ranks and you can start at the board and you go into the senior leadership team and then down and you'll find that uh, two, three levels down is when, where, you know, there's a lot of diversity. Once you start getting to that upper echelon, let's call it the last couple of rungs in the ladder. I think that's where we have the biggest gap. So how are you creating that pipeline Right, or and building those roles where um, your top rungs, the top rungs in your ladder, are similar, right, uh, to the populations that are below uh, those rungs. So, so I think be intentional um, as an organization from for, from a people standpoint um, is you know be vulnerable, expose yourself, uh, talk about your culture your upbringing, uh, it's special, it's important. I mean, for me, one of the biggest learnings that I've had uh, are people that are sharing their story, right? And how they came up and, and what they did. And, and, and you find a lot of similar stories, right? Uh, from the upbringing to what they did to overcome. Uh, part of overcoming is getting to where you wanna get to, um, but then how do you bring others, right? And I think by bringing others, you have to create that ecosystem. You have to help, you have to be intentional about creating environments that engender what we're looking for, which is you know, ultimately is to be treated fairly, right? And, 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 and that, that's, that takes a, it's a partnership, it's a shared responsibility uh, from organizations and individuals. And I understand that it's really difficult uh, to share sometimes uh, your story, uh, your specific stories, but uh, I think when people get to know um, where you came from, um, they don't have to like you, but they'll respect you, right? Because, uh, you know, hard work, dedication, uh, you don't, that, that goes beyond ethnicity, religion, creed, uh, gender, um, you know, people appreciate uh, the effort, um, people appreciate the, the passion, and people react to that. So if, if you're holding back from, from being genuine, from sharing you and your background and your story, then people never get to know you. They'll get to know the work that you do. Right. And that's it. And I think it's more than that. I think when people can share more of themselves and, and be more authentic, um, that's when change, real change uh, starts to happen, because now you've integrated who you are to the rest of the larger sort of whole here. Um, so that, that would be my advice is to share information, meet with others, have those discussions and don't be shy. Right, uh, open up and uh, people will reciprocate. That's, that's great. Um, and, and a really profound message um, too, because sometimes it's, it's um, you know, ironically, sometimes you can be um, in a group that's very diverse. And when people do share their story, you actually find out that, um, you know, you're more similar than you, you might have even imagined. Um, and so it's a whole, you know, different way of, of building bonds and, and, uh, and cultivating, you know, learning communities, professional relationships, all of that. Um, really, really profound message. Thank you. Thank you, Yanethi. Um, so I, I, do, I, I do have more questions for you, but I don't wanna be selfish. What I wanna do at this point is, um, you know, open the floor uh, both to the, the leadership team as well as to all meeting participants, um, you know, to, to feel free to pose questions. Um, I have a question. <laughs> you know, I could I'm jumping on the edge of my seat, Yanessi, because I've always enjoyed my my conversations with you. Um, you. You talk about authentic and you use that word quite a bit. Um, I know for me personally, it wasn't as easy being authentic earlier in my career because I felt like I needed to um, uh, conform in some way, shape, or form to fit in. Didn't matter if I was working inside of a tech job or an administrative role or whatever else. I always had this thought in the back of my mind that I had to conform in some way, shape, or form, which 
can be counter to being authentic. My question for you is, have you always been authentic or was there a point in your career where you decided that you wanted to be authentic? And, and if so, when and what triggered that? It's a, it's, a, it's a really good question, right? So I think uh, so I moved a lot like, growing up, right? I came from very humble, humble means. Um, and we moved a lot, right? So um, fitting in was important and fitting in quickly was even more important. So uh, for me, my entire life has always been, and you know, humans experience this wherever they go, right? It's you want to fit in. Um, if it pertains to kind of the reality, um, you know, coming from the Dominican Republic, right? It was interesting how um, I'd never really uh, experienced any type of, uh, you know, racism or anything like that overt, right? It, it took me uh, getting to boarding school. So I got a scholarship, went to boarding school uh, for high school. And, and one of my best friends, you know, uh, Anglo-Saxon white white male, right? So we were best friends and we practiced martial arts together, hence the source behind me. And and we went to um we were at a shopping shopping mall and he's like, How come you don't want to go inside? I'm like, man, listen, watch this. You stay outside and watch what happens. So I walked in and he's like, Oh my God, why were they following you? Like, wow. And he's wow. like, to this day, one of my, still one of my best friends, right? To this day, he remembers that story. And he's like, I would have never known that, that we were like this around here. Like, this is my neighborhood. We, we don't, that's not what we do. And it's kind of that bias that um, for, for a big portion of my life, um, I had to try to fit in, right? And, and I know we, we get it from both angles, right? So you get the, you're fitting in, it's a good thing, right? But you also get it from, I remember teaching at, at, at university in Brooklyn, right? Early on in my career, uh, giving back uh, to the community, right? I was always excited uh, about uh, how professors, adjunct professors were doing the job during the day and teaching us at night. I wanted to do that. I had the opportunity and the time to do it, build out a couple of security programs and taught security courses. They needed somebody to help them. So I was, I was a teacher and I got the, the inverse, which is, hey, I mean, you're so well-spoken. You're from the Bronx. Why do you speak like this? Right. So you get it from both angles, which is interesting. And it was at that point in time that I knew, um, you know, I, I got to take this uh, this mask off and I just got to be me. Right. Because mm. um, it, it's I don't want to really want to fit in. I want to do what's right. Um, and I found that my career opportunities became um, uh, I would say uh, more competitive uh, because now I was different, right? And I wasn't different. I was just being me. Uh, and, you know, I think that that's something that we struggle, right? I can tell you about my background as a inner city minority youth, right? Afro Latino. I, I can tell you that th there's a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome. We have it to the umpteenth level because we've got to fit in in multiple different aspects. So it's about if you look at my background, I've got a doctorate uh, in, in, in cybersecurity. Um, I've got like 11, 13 certifications. I don't, we have to overachieve on, to break that barrier, to break, break that ceiling. So now that I'm here, uh, what I'm telling folks is just be passionate about what you do, uh, be authentic, be you, um, and, and let the rest work itself out, right? Um, love me for all my imperfections and, and for my salsa dancing and my love for rice and, and beans, right? So like that, that you just gotta be yourself and uh, everything else will take care of itself. Execute, we talked about earlier, right? Do the right thing. Um, you Doing the right thing is universal, right? So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if, uh, you know, you, you like cricket or you like baseball, doing the right thing is universal. So uh, for me, th those were kind of the turning points uh, in my life that, that led me to uh, to be authentic. And speaking of authenticity, Eric, you know, I've noticed over the last few years, you, you've, dropped, you've grown some dreads. I have no hair. <laughs> I was grown up. But, but, but it's, it's great seeing that yeah. as well, right? Just from watching you uh, being you now, right? So yeah, yeah. And, and that's really uh, when I heard you say authentic, that's really what I because again, it was I, I had a similar experience. I, I waited uh, for my dreads to, to, to grow. Um, again, because I was trying to conform. So thank you. Thank you for, for leaning in and sharing that with us, Yanessi. I appreciate it. 
So we have a couple of questions in the chat as well. Um, the first one is from Sonia Kim. Um, and the question is, what's the best way to become the best BISO uh, as a career changer? So I'm assuming, you know, um, it's, uh, you know, from, from another role in cyber or, or maybe not, maybe just another role in IT. But, um, you know, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on that um, in terms of becoming a BISO? Yeah, no, I think it's a great question, right? So, you know, um, I kind of cut my teeth coming from the other angle, which is from executing protection and being a defender, right? Um, make sure you're, you have a broad background in cyber and maybe a specialization. And then you've got to take your knowledge of cybersecurity and understand what's in it for the business, right? So you, you, you have to put yourself in the business's shoes. So not only do you have to be security professional, knowledgeable, et cetera, but now you've got to become sort of a, a, an advisor to the business. And that uh, is gonna take some time and some learning, right? Talked about that inquisitive mind, continuous learning, lifelong learner, you gotta learn about the business that you wanna support. Uh, and their uh, companies have various uh, lines of businesses. They have various areas within the business. So understand how they tick and then how do you map the two, right? So how do you ensure that the security program components are being adhered to, but it also it's a loop back as a feedback loop where now you have to also let program know what the needs of the business are uh, in order to help the business grow, satisfy your customers. So uh, it, it requires really BISOs um, require, I call them uh, sales and marketing, right? If I think about cybersecurity, uh, as a business, right, you've got your accounting, governance, risk, and compliance. You've got your products and services, right, engineering, employee protection, defense, et cetera. Those are the products and services. And then you've got your marketing and sales team. And that's what a BISO is, right? How, how do I sell the security program? How do I get feedback from my customers? That could be my internal customers, my external customers. How do I get that feedback? And how do I make sure that I'm providing great service? And, and the ultimate goal of a, of a BISO should be how can I provide frictionless security so that the businesses can do what they need to do and we remain secure? So that's my advice uh, for a BISO uh, and, and uh, you know, being a CISO, which is kind of the ultimate BISO, right? Um, those are things that, that you can take then to the next level, right? Um, and then it becomes all about people, right? We've been talking about authenticity, being genuine and things of that nature. It really becomes uh, around people. And uh, if you have not read it yet, I recommend Dale Carnegie book, which is a classic. I read it once a year. How to win friends and influence people. Uh, it's the, the key to life, right? It's not about what you want. It's what, what others want, right? That's the key to success. Absolutely. And, and that's a perfect segue to our next question from Garrett uh, Fioramo, who's asking, which resources do you look to when doing research to improve yourself professionally and your security program? And it could be websites or social media or books. Yeah, so I got this question the other day uh, as part of my security awareness team. So my head of security awareness and strategy reached out and to the leadership team and said, hey, what are your sources for information? So in the era of uh, the internet and social media, I find that Twitter is very um, uh, influential. And, and the reason behind that is, is the personas that exist on Twitter. Uh, and it, it, it was at least 20 people that I consistently follow uh, to get my, my updates on cybersecurity. So, you know, find them, uh, follow them. Um, you know, there's a lot of great resources from a podcast standpoint. I'll name a couple, right? Uh, Down the Security Rabbit Hole with Rafa Lowe's, uh, SANS uh, Internet Security Storm Center, um, and the uh, Bank Security Focus uh, are a great podcast uh, to get information. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, fo following, um, social media accounts, specifically Twitter of, of security luminaries and visionaries, and even the companies you like, right? And seeing uh, what's out there and what's new. And I find that I get breaking, sometimes I get more breaking information from uh, the, those folks than even the actual news that I subscribe to. So um, I think uh, we need to continue to diversify uh, the way we ingest. And then uh, using that to, to further investigate with your networks, right? Building a strong network becomes very important. So, so there's Twitter, there's uh, groups that you can join, Slack groups, Signal groups, et cetera, with like-minded peers uh, to get at that information. And you also find that we're having similar issues, similar problems. 
uh, and being able to kind of share that information. If you're, if you're in financial services uh, or any other industry, there's a health ISAG, there's a FS ISAG, there's a consumer goods ISAG, and, and make sure that you're part of those uh, sharing sources. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, organizations uh, for, from a development standpoint, like SANS I mentioned earlier, ISACA, IC Square are good places to go. Um, specifically now, everything moving to the cloud. Uh, definitely, there's a lot of free material uh, with well-architected frameworks, whether it's Azure, uh, GCP, or AWS, you know, you, there's free material for you to go. And then finally, YouTube. You want to find out how to do anything, just get to YouTube and you'll find the latest and greatest. Again, think of YouTube as a social media that shows you how to actually do it and give you, you know, detailed videos on how to do stuff. Um, I find that even when I was teaching way back when, there's so much great content uh, there to explain um, what's happening, uh, latest and greatest news and updates. Uh, so uh, there's a wealth of opportunity. I wish that uh, I can go back in, well, let's see. I can, if I had to restart my career with all the information that's available today, it'd be amazing. There's just so much there. Uh, and I think my last comment would be, there's a ton of university courses. Uh, you won't get credit for them, but you can be in the class of the next topic you want to listen into, whether it's Yale, Harvard, MIT, you know, whatever school uh, that you want to take courses on, you, you won't get credit for them, but you'll get the knowledge. Continue to have that inquisitive mind, lifelong That's learner, right. plenty of resources. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so we have one uh, time for one more question, and, and uh, Garrett has a follow up. Um, he asks, Yonessi, have you felt it challenging at your current or past roles to tie security initiatives to business outcomes and to have the cybersecurity department be seen less as a cost center and more as an innovation enabler? This is a question near and dear to, to my heart. <laughs> great. Thank you, great Garrett, question. for asking it. Yeah, no, it's a great question, right? And, and, and I think it goes back to, you know, as you are implementing a security program, right? You have to understand that uh, your company has a business to run, right? So it's not just about securing your organization, it's how do you do that at, and at the same time, allow the business to perform the activities uh, without creating more friction. And that is kind of the million dollar question, right? Because inherently, um, security is going to be a creator of friction. And, and now with all the advancements and, and automation, um, you have to drive towards that uh, automated uh, remediation, um, you know, uh, just how to allow uh, part of the protection in an automated fashion uh, becomes key. Um, have I struggled with uh, showcasing why security is important? I would say, I think we always do, um, but it's all about education, right? And, and I think uh, visibility, metrics and reporting, uh, once people understand, right? Remember I told you, right? Do the right thing. You have to tell the story. What's the state? So once people understand the state, right? The, and that you thought through and prioritize what needs to get done, people will get behind that because who wants to have an insecure environment? Nobody wakes up in the morning saying, today, I'm going to make my company less secure. Nobody said that. Nobody woke, wakes up every morning saying, I'm going to have my organization fail. So if we know that people want to do the right thing, let's make sure they get the right story. They get the right information so they can make those informed of business decisions. And that's what I really look to do is to how do we in the sea of all these er issues or problems or areas, how do we distill that down and prioritize our approach? in a way that um, you're removing right, risk uh, from, uh, from the table um, and you are um, really engendering uh, faster business decisions. And frankly, uh, more and more these days, security is that provider that can help companies move faster. Yes, absolutely. Well, fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Um, just looking here to make sure we actually, yeah, we have we have more comments in here. I just wanted to make sure that we got everybody's questions covered. Um, fantastic. Um, 
so we're gonna we're gonna shift gears a little bit now. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I want to express my my gratitude and and thanks to Yonesi um, for joining us here today. We we couldn't have kicked off our uh, New York City chapter with a, a better coverage, um, you know, of what's top of mind for CISOs right now um, than, than you provided with us here today. So, so many thanks to you. And we hope that you'll be a part of the, uh, the New York City Metro chapter going forward, um, you know, as a, as a, as a native uh, you know, New Yorker yourself. So absolutely. Um, we wanna thank our sponsors. I wanna thank uh, the leadership team for, um, you know, not only participating today, but in everything that that led up to this meeting. Um, and just a reminder on how to engage with us, um, you know, through our chapter page on the website or NYC at ICMCP.org. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to shift gears and I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Um, he's going to lead the networking portion of the meeting. What we want to do is, um, you know, each month, We'll bring a different topic to cover in, in depth, you know, be it again a, a CISO fireside chat or a Skillshare or a panel discussion. Um, but we want to follow that up with some time for the members to really, you know, get to know each other, get to know us, um, build a community. So we want to open it up um, for that virtual networking piece. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Jason and I want to thank everyone for their participation. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining today. Uh, the attendance is outstanding and I'm just excited to, I'm really happy about the turnout and how this is going so far. Um, before we go into the whole networking thing, I wanted to actually ask Nessie, I asked about the, the samurai swords. You mentioned you're a martial artist. What martial art do you do? Yeah, so this is uh, Rushin Shoichi Ru. Okay. Um, the art, uh, Japanese art of drawing the blade really fast, <laughs> cutting and resheathing the blade. Interesting. So with a live blade, do you do much sparring and stuff or fighting or is it more horns? Uh, great question. So uh, yeah, no, we don't practice with the live blade. Uh, one okay. of those is actually a live blade. Uh, we do what's called tamashiri, which is a cutting of uh, bamboo tatami mats. So think of them like rugs made out of bamboo sticks. Um, rolled up, and so we, we test uh, kind of our swords and, and our ability to have great cuts with those mats. We practice uh, forms with uh, uh, unsharpened, um, you know, um, basically zinc and uh, alloy swords that you can never hold an edge, right? Um, so we practice with those, and then we uh, perform, you know, blocks and attacks with wooden, uh, what they call a boken. Uh, so that, that's that's how that goes. Very cool, very cool. And one last question. Um, if you could spar or fight with any person, character uh, in the world at any time, president, whatever, past or future, who would you spar with and why? I would have to say, you know, as a swordsman, uh, it would be uh, a Musashi, Miyamoto Musashi, which is a legendary okay. Japanese samurai. So. So if I'm going to get my butt whipped, uh, it better be. Uh, so that, that's who I'm going against. Legendary um, Miyamoto Musashi. <clears throat> that's awesome. Well, Yanessi, thank you very much for today. And thank you for sharing. As Jennifer mentioned, for the next uh, 15 minutes, uh, we want to get to know everyone. So, right. Uh, we're here as a community and we want to be able to promote and help network with each other. So can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, obviously we'll do a little introductions, icebreakers and networking. Uh, I'll ask everyone to go around the virtual room and give your name, the current company you're working for, how long you've been in cybersecurity, your favorite TV show, and uh, why you joined Cyversity and how can we help you? Because obviously we're here, the board members are here to help everyone, right? So, and that's, I believe why everyone is here as well. So let me, I will go first. <coughs> So my name obviously is Jason Salas Gonzalez. Um, Yanessi actually asked, is my middle name really sales before we joined the call today? And yes, yes it is. So here's a fun fact. Uh, I am Filipino descent, but born and raised in Pasig, New Jersey. And the child usually takes in a Filipino family, the mother's maiden name. So my mother's name is Ninfa Salas. So it's Jason Salas Gonzalez and just happened to work 
in cybersecurity and sales capacity for the past 18 years. Uh, I worked for, uh, work for Tenable, which is a vulnerability management company. And my favorite TV show is Ted Lasso. So has anyone watched Ted Lasso yet? Hands up. It is Great. hilarious. Great and if you haven't watched it, get a free subscription for Apple. I'm sure they're out there for one year and check it out. <clears throat> uh, one of the main reasons why I love Ted Lasso is, well, number one, it's, it's funny as heck. But also, he, Ted Lasso, the character is a total fish out of water character where he coached college football and he goes to London and coaches a soccer team and he's never coached, you know, he's nothing about soccer, but his tagline is he believes and he's so positive and he also believes in helping people and the individual of the team and hence the team gets better and better and, and wins uh, championships. And lastly, why did I join Cyversity? Um, in the past 18 years, a lot of people have mentored me coached me, purchased software from me, even though I probably wasn't qualified to talk about it. Um, and they just helped me. And now I'm in a situation where if I could mentor people, coach people, help network people with uh, the chief security officers that I know, I'm down to pay it forward. So, and lastly, I do believe in my more uh, diversity and I apologize for being a little bit long-winded, um, but I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I did a CISO roundtable happy hour in Times Square. And there was 20 CISOs, and there was only two women and three people of color. Um, and I think we could do better. I know we could do better. And that's why I'm here. And it all starts with believing that we can make a change, and a change can start now. So that's who I am. Uh, Yanessi. Go back to you. Obviously, we know who you are and stuff, but can you tell us your favorite TV show? Sure, absolutely. So I don't watch a lot of TV, but um, I, I read a lot of books. Uh, I like reading fiction, uh, fantasy. So uh, one of my favorite shows right now is The Expanse, right? So um, I really enjoy that that show. I think it got, got picked up by, by uh, Prime, Amazon. So that's where I catch that. So looking forward to the next season. Uh, I do enjoy the, the Witcher series as well. So really excited about uh, where that series is going. So th those would be kind of the shows that I, I look forward to. Oh, and with, so I say that's for my enjoyment, but I got kids. So um, my, my son uh, enjoys uh, Japanese animation. So I got to watch some anime with him. My cool. daughter, she loves Stranger Things and, uh, and Victoria, so um, so that, that's how I kind of spend my time. Uh, that's awesome. Time. Thank you for sharing. Henry, are you out there? Hey, Jason. Yes, I'm out here. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Good. Great. Um, uh, thank you for joining today. You mind joining sure. us and uh, sharing? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I wasn't planning to, to talk, but uh, you put him on the spot, Jason. Uh, so my name is Henry, Henry Zhang. I'm the CISO for a SaaS company called Diligent. Uh, we make the product for, for board of directors. So that we are in GRC space, ESG and GRC, all the governance we call modern governance company. So there's a two second plug for my company. Um, uh, being in the cybersecurity, if you count apply ACL, right, uh, to the Cisco 6500s, I've, I've been doing that for probably 20 plus years, <laughs> but uh, I transitioned to a, a formal CISO role about seven years ago when I worked for uh, US based financial service company. I was the first CISO. Uh, didn't know I was doing a volunteer. I said, hey, I could be a CISO. I've been to security anyway, not knowing, right? It's a, it's a life-changing <laughs> career. It's no longer, uh, you know, the technical control is really part of it, right? It's more about governance, regulations, and uh, compliance. Uh, still enjoying doing it. So at, at a diligent, I do all of that, set ops, operations, GRC, you know, the, 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 the full gamut of, of, you know, come to the CISO territory. Uh, by the way, I know Jason for over probably seven, eight years. I know Eric actually more than that. <laughs> uh, Eric was uh, one of the vendors that we used uh, back in back in the days. Um, my favorite TV show. There's so many of them, but I still think by far maybe Breaking Bad is still you know my number one show. I watched maybe three times already. <laughs> mm. um, so that that's a uh, yeah that's an old show, but uh, at, at, in my book still the probably one of the best ones. I enjoyed. Um, 
what did what did I join subversely? I, I don't think I'm a member, but I'm involved in, in maybe different different ways. Uh, but uh, yeah, looking forward to be uh, of any of a service to, to the members here, uh, any any guidance or learning from from my peers. So thank you for uh, including me here today. Thank you, Jason. Henry, thank you very much for sharing. I will uh, definitely check Breaking Bad. Uh, I got up to season two. Uh, I'll check it out again and uh, really appreciate you sharing and uh, joining the call today. Uh, Garrett, would you like to go next? I'm not sure if we hear your audio, Garrett. No? Garrett, we're gonna come back to you in a second, if you don't mind. Mr. Peter, good afternoon. Good afternoon all. Uh, Peter Rosario, CISO for USI. Um, favorite TV shows, I would have to go with Ozark at this moment in time. I've been in cybersecurity for ooh, about 28 years. Um, why did I join Cyversity? I've known Larry Whiteside for about seven years. We met down at the Gartner Conference. Um, and like many of you guys, I'm trying to find people of my color. Yonesti and I share very similar backgrounds, both from the Bronx, both CNEs, both humble beginnings. And we got to where we are, right? Because we, we had to do what we had to do to get where we are today. But there are not many of us out there. So we need to change that. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing and thanks for attending. Sure. Garrett, were you able to, are you there? Can you hear me this time? Yes, we can. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, my name is Garrett Filaramo. Um, I work at a company actually down in Tampa called ReliaQuest. Um, I've been in security for under a year now, so I try to join um, as many, you know, kind of different uh, events and whatnot like this that I can get some different perspectives and learn um, along the way. Um, my favorite TV show has to be The Sopranos. I'm from New York originally, but uh, I did just start watching Ted Lasso. I just started the second season and I am like binging it the past couple of days. So it's definitely up there as well. <laughs> um, and to be honest, uh, I, I just uh, heard about this. I've been connected with Yanessi on, uh, on LinkedIn, kind of just keep up with um, him and a lot of other you know, security leaders that I kind of follow. And I saw him post about this event um, and I thought it sounded like you know, a good opportunity. Uh, so I appreciate all of you having me and I definitely, uh, I definitely was correct because I think I learned a lot and it was uh, it was great just being a part of this uh, this environment with all you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Garrett. And definitely check the calendar because we have a lot more events uh, coming down the line and looking forward to seeing you in this environment again. I absolutely will. Thank you so much, Jason. Appreciate awesome. it. Carlos Edwards. Are you out there? No. How about oh, there hey. you are. Hello. So so terribly sorry. I wasn't expected to be called upon. Uh, oh, everyone's got to participate, my friend. We're here. We're here. <laughs> so, hey, uh, uh, so greetings to all. The name is Carlos Edwards. Uh, I serve as a co-founder and board member for Cyversity, formerly known as ICMCP. I won't even try and spell the whole acronym out there. But anyway, um, let me see. What, what was it? The favorite TV show? Yes, sir. I would, I would, I would probably have to say uh, get up 8 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, right? <laughs> uh, that's what I watch faithfully, you know, ESPN and, and uh, a football NFL or college football uh, uh, game. Um, I think your your other question was the subject of uh, why cyversity? Yes, correct. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm driving and talking. Well, oh was my God. That? Anyway, anyway uh, well, I've gotten out now. Anyway, um, why Cyversity? Simply put, um, several have said it. Uh, we, we talk about humble beginnings. I got to say, uh, about 30 years ago, uh, but let me just say 25 years ago, I, uh, active duty military, I literally lied my way into a cybersecurity type of profession. I didn't even own a computer at home. But I said, yeah, I got that firewall <laughs> stuff. I got that DNS stuff. I can handle that. I had no clue what I was doing. I, I made my way in there. And I want to say one thing. I'll never forget any time I had to do a briefing on what was going on from the security perimeter, what was happening within the infrastructure or the particular base that I might have been monitoring or whatever the case may be. I went into a room filled with admirals, commanders and lieutenants, so on and so forth, where none of them looked like me. I was literally the only one in the room and I was having a conversation briefing them. And, and I got to say one one additional note. 
my very initial briefing in the active duty military as a Navy uh, uh, sailor, instead of me doing a PowerPoint presentation, I probably printed out a 5,000 page manual for a, a gauntlet firewall to hand out to admirals. So <laughs> you can imagine how that went, right? I didn't know any better. I didn't have any leadership or mentors at the time. So it was a lesson learned. So that's kind of my humble beginnings, my learnings and, you know, the, the, the now and why. So thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Sonia Kim, are you out there? Yes, I'm here. Welcome. Hi there. My name is uh, Sonia Kim. Uh, I'm the founder and um, CEO of One Caring Team, where we help seniors live better using medical VR virtual reality program. Uh, I also uh, founded Best MD House Calls, where I make house calls for seniors who are homebound and bedbound. I am a career changer uh, going into cybersecurity, aspiring be so. Um, uh, having spoken uh, with a lot of uh, mentors and wonderful leaders through ICMCP, also known as Cyversity, uh, I've learned that my next chapter will involve uh, BSO. Um, so I'm very excited about this uh, new journey, and I'm very um, happy with all the connections that I was able to make through the uh, Cyversity Network. So thank you so much for holding this space for us, uh, for new beginners or career changers uh, embarking on this new journey. Um, Let's see, favorite TV show. I don't really watch that many TV shows, but I did see uh, Ted Lasso uh, when I was away with a friend. So uh, I really love that show. And uh, I try to uh, <laughs> always uh, try to be a servant leader myself when I'm leading a team of uh, you know, clinical operations team or technical team, UI, UX designer, so on and so forth. Um, why did I join uh, Subversity? Well, as a minority woman, uh, you know, going into a new field, I thought uh, uh, cybersity <laughs> would be a good place to start. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey. And I look forward to uh, uh, meeting and connecting with wonderful uh, leaders going forward. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for sharing and joining. Look forward Absolutely. to you, uh, next month. Um, I'm getting a, I'm getting a, message saying we have less than five minutes left and I, I don't want to keep everyone past the one o'clock mark. So would, would anyone want to join a uh, volunteer to go or anyone? I, I apologize if we haven't got, if you aren't called on today, but I'll make sure that uh, we'll, we'll get to you next week. Um, really excited that everyone's uh, joining and, and, you know, conversing. Did, did I, did, I'm sorry, did I talk over someone? I just uh, said, sure. <laughs> Oh, did you want to go, Curtis? I can go, sure. Awesome. Please. Uh, okay. Uh, Curtis Blunt, um, I have dual roles right now. Uh, so I'm the uh, global head of uh, cybersecurity risk and compliance for uh, Group M um, in New York City. Um, and then I also have a startup company called Insight Cyber Group. Um, where we're building out a brand new artificial intelligence technology specifically around IoT, critical infrastructure, and OT uh, cybersecurity. So um, how long have I been in cybersecurity? Oh, God. Um, I'm telling my age now. Uh, if I count uh, 17 years in the military, I'm, I'll be 40 years in cybersecurity next year. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason why I wanted to join, uh, join Subversity, uh, twofold. Number one, you know, I'm marching towards retirement now. Um, and Insight Cyber Group is going to basically pay for my retirement. That's kind of my plan. But um, I also want to give back. So I've been doing a lot of mentorship um, and training uh, in the, I live in the South Jersey, close to Philadelphia, uh, but I work in the New York City area. So I've trained, I've mentored people up and down uh, the East Coast here for years. And I wanted to join an organization where I can help build out a, a foundation and a program that actually brings more people of color and more women uh, not only into technology, but also into uh, cybersecurity. Um, I'm currently trying to hire right now on the Group M side of the house 
seven wrecks right now uh, for my new security team. Um, and I just can't find people. Just, just really can't. And the unfortunate thing is that I want to train, but I also need people. Oh, will you hush? <laughs> my dog. Um, but I also need people that have you know, some training and some background where they can just jump in with both feet. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, TV show, I'm a sci-fi head. So uh, yeah, I like The Expanse also. That's kind of my, my binge watch. But ultimately, my favorite is the remake of Battlestar Galactica. Just Good. an incredible show. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you very, uh, very much for joining us, Curtis. Mm -hmm. And once again, I do apologize if I didn't get to everyone today, but I'll make sure you'll, you'll get to talk and network next week, uh, next month. Uh, with that said, I'm going to pass it back to, to Jennifer. Jennifer, you want to wrap things up? Yes, Jason, thank you so much. So um, we will be meeting monthly. Um, typically we'll be uh, around this time during the month. We've got some um, holidays coming up in the next um, quarter. So, you know, dates may be a, a little bit flexible, but please follow us, um, register as a member. You'll get, you know, updates uh, around all the events and uh, be on the lookout because each month we will be coming back with more and we hope you join us. Hey Jennifer, if I can just say one thing, uh, uh... Uh, Caitlin posted in the chat just to fill out the uh, the survey, survey. Uh, so that we can stay in, in touch and, uh, and and get feedback in terms of our, our first first shot at doing this. So absolutely, uh, thank you, Kirby. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much. It was a great session, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.